Hello everyone. In continuation with the inverse Laplace transform, we'll be dealing with the convolution theorem. So this is today's session. We'll go ahead with the statement and the, and the proof of the convolution theorem. So by the end of the session, we'll be able to state and prove the convolution theorem. So what the statement? Statement goes as if Laplace inverse of f1 of s is f1 of t and it is Laplace inverse of f2 of s as f2 of t. Laplace inverse of f1 of s into f2 of s is equals to 0 to t f1 of u into f2 of t minus u du. So this is known as the convolution theorem or you can say where this 0 to t f1 of u into f2 of t minus u du is equals to f1 of t star f2 of t. What is this f1 of t star f2 of t? It's known as the convolution of f1 of t and f2 of t which is giving me the convolution and that is the that is why this theorem is known as convolution theorem for inverse Laplace transforms. So we'll be using this. Let us uh, just walk through the proof of this. So this we have already seen that f1 of s, f2 of s, the product will give me Laplace transform of f1 of t, Laplace of f2 of t, which is nothing but we will we'll just put the, the here, the basic definition of Laplace transform, the my first this term would give me 0 to infinity e to the power minus su f1 of u du into 0 to infinity e to the power minus sv f2 of v dv. So this is nothing but integration 0 to infinity f1 of u into integration from 0 to infinity e to the power minus s u plus v f2 of v dv into du. Okay. Now we can have something like this here. So we can go ahead with the substitution that is that means we have to just note this down u plus v is equals to t which is dv is equals to dt what will happen with the limit if v equals to 0 t goes to u so if this v is going to be 0 then this u is equals to t so t is nothing but the another variable that is u and if v is going to the infinity obviously the t will also go to the infinity because we have got the addition over here and therefore this f1 of s into f2 of s will give me 0 to infinity f1 of u into integration from u to infinity e to the power minus st f2 of t minus u dt du which is same as integration 0 to infinity integration u to infinity. So we have got this the, the innermost integral is for the variable t and the outer variable outer integral is for u is equals to 0 to infinity. Okay, so this is the step. Now, uh, uh, I'm just carrying the same formula over here. So, because I just wanted to refer it uh, ahead. Now, if you'll observe, it's u to infinity and 0 to infinity. So, this is nothing but a double integral. And if I wanted to solve this double integral, what is this? I have got two variables. One is t, right, as I have told you in the previous. And another one is u is equal to, sorry. Another one is u equals to 0 to infinity we have got this therefore we have got two suppose this is a two dimensional so this is a t axis this is a u axis and if you'll observe this is the origin here now t is moving from u to infinity so inner integral inner integral is moving from u to infinity that means what is the line here or what is the curve here? The curve is u is equals to t. So this is what is the line. u is equals to t. Is this the line? Okay. Now the another is that means what? If we observe, I have got this t as the horizontal axis and u as the vertical axis. And therefore, if I wanted to trace this particular um, this curve over here. So what will be the, the curve? Curve is like it is going... Uh, the strip I need to consider a strip parallel to t or you can say the parallel to this axis t axis and therefore the t this is that means this uh, this entire the the strip is moving from uh, parallel to t axis and it is going from this to this so therefore the lower end of that strip is lying on this t equals to u that means it is lying somewhere here on this curve because at, this is a double integral just you refer my uh, sessions on the double integral you will come to know what how to trace the particular curve 
or identify the curve which curve has been given to us so for this t equals to u first of all i need to identify the innermost integral the innermost integral is for t therefore the strip is parallel to that axis whichever the axis was so my axis is t over here because the inner integral is for t equals to therefore the other strip will go a strip is parallel to the t axis and if it is parallel to x axis uh, sorry t axis so lower end or, or you can say the leftmost end of that strip is lying on the curve u is equals to t and the upper or the other right hand side end is on the infinity so this is what the infinity that means what this this strip is go will be on and on towards a t axis what this shows that this shows the the axis or the limits for u u is moving from 0 to infinity that means u is equals to 0 is this axis that is a t axis 0 to 0 to infinity that means again this the another end is also going towards the infinity so if you observe this is what is the required region so this is a triangular region but this the end of this particular uh, region is not there so this is what is the area under the consideration now if i wanted to change the order of integration i wanted to change the order of integration so i have to consider the strip parallel to the parallel to x this u axis over here x u axis over here and therefore if you'll observe if you'll observe here if i'm i'm considering a strip parallel to u axis the lower end of this ax this uh, end is on u so that means what the inner integral is will become for u is equal so because it's a parallel to u axis because i have changed the order of integration so this is u is equals to zero to t because the lower end is on the ax this uh, t axis which is u is equals to zero and upper end is here on the curve u is equals to t therefore it is moving from u is equals to zero to t right and what will happen about this so this u or t is moving from t is moving from this point to this point so what is this the lower the uh, the this end so it's tip is will start from here it will come 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 and that will have that will there is no end of this so it will move up to infinity but there is a starting point for this particular strip is that is for zero so therefore the limit for the t is equals to zero to infinity so what, what we have done we have changed the order of integration so u equals to zero to t t equals to zero to infinity what will happen to the other uh, the the integrand here over here there will not be any change for the integrand we have just changed the order of integration so what will happen here so this u is equals to 0 to t and t is equals to 0 to infinity t is equals to 0 to infinity so now if you observe if you observe this is t is equals to 0 to infinity e to the power minus st and this is a function over here clear so if you observe this particular function what it is by the apply if you apply the uh, definition here of the laplace transform this will give me the laplace transform of integration 0 to t f1 of u f2 of t minus u du clear because we have got the laplace transform of f of t is equals to e to the sorry integration 0 to infinity e to the power minus st into f of t dt so we have done the same thing so we have separated this f of t over here and that is the reason we have done it here the change of integration over here so you would understand why what is the need of this change of integration here because we wanted to write down this 0 to inf 0 to t so if this u to infinity we don't have to find out the laplace of this but yes we could find out the, the laplace transform of an integral 0 to t and therefore this is laplace transform of 0 to t f1 of u f2 of t minus u du and if i'll take this laplace from this place to the other place that is here it will give me laplace inverse right because if this laplace will move from here to here it will give me laplace inverse so my operator would change from the laplace to laplace inverse here and that is what is the proof for this particular thing now if you observe i have written the statement over here what is the meaning of this laplace transform of 0 to t f1 of u f2 of t minus u du is equals to laplace of 0 to t f1 of t minus u f2 of u du so if you observe both of them there is a change only with this t minus u t minus u f that is the meaning is the convolution operator is commutative the, uh, com convolution operator is commutative 
that is a very important property of the convolution theorem or the convolution operator yes that is from my side and we don't have this time the uh, self observation slide because i have to just start with this from the next session onwards we'll be getting the, the self observation slide thank you happy learning